Hey y'all, what's going on? Welcome back to our At Home Body Weight Program. It's Natalie Higby here. And Christian Placencia. We're super excited to have you guys join us. Today is day six. This is one of our recovery days. And this is one of the days that we really prioritize and value, knowing that over time, these days, help us continue to perform at our highest level. Mm -hmm. So it's really important on these days that we focus on our breath, we focus on our movement, and we think about it as being really intentional and trying to put energy back into our body. Cool? So today is a flow, but we're starting with what we call a move and groove. You guys have seen this before. We're going three movements for 40 seconds just in a cycle, okay? I'm gonna have Christian move through this with you guys as I explain, so I want you guys to start moving with him in just a few moments. Let's go ahead and set up your feet wider than shoulder width, toes just rotated out slightly, maybe at a 45 degree angle, okay? And then from here, it's our sumo squat. So we'll go in three, two, one, as we drop down into the squat position and back up. Now you'll see Christian is pushing his arms in front and pulling his arms back. As he moves, you could do the same motion. You could take your arms overhead, but we just want to kind of remind ourselves to keep our chest up. There you go. Our eyes up. Beautiful job. And what we're thinking about here is as our feet are flat, we're kind of pulling the knees back and out. So you'll see that his knees are in line with his toes and they're not caving in, but we're getting this backside to really work and we're opening up the front side of the hips here. 10 more seconds. Excellent job. A few more reps. Hopefully getting a little bit lower each time, feeling a little more comfortable with this. Three, two, one, let's take it down to the ground. Move number two is our shin box switch. So hands behind us, long spine, proud chest. From here, allow the knees to fall to one side. So we are working our hips right here, internal, external rotation. Now, a couple key things as we start to move right to left. So you can move with him as I talk through this. Use your hands behind you so that you don't have this kind of roundedness in your upper back, yeah, and we don't want to collapse. We want to, again, think Superman chest. Think shoulders back tall through the top of your head. So those hands on the ground are going to help keep that spine long and help you really work the hips as we shift side to side. Now, another thing is keeping your bottom on the ground and keeping your feet on the ground. So we don't want the hips to lift off the floor. If you're feeling really tight in this position, you can allow a little more space by taking your feet out a little bit wider, and that will help. Awesome job. Three, two, one. And we've got down dog to pigeon as our last move here, okay? So hands pressing into the floor, keeping those arms straight. Let's bring the hips up for a down dog. So we have a soft bend in the knees, really getting that stretch through the hamstrings, through the calves. We'll come up, knee to the same side wrist for a pigeon stretch. Hold for a second, push back. So again, we've got 40 seconds on the clock here. This one isn't about holding for a long time, and it's also not about moving as fast as possible, but it's matching your breath to your movement. So in each position, we're pausing for a one, two, maybe a three count. Again, always pushing back into a down dog, and then coming forward into this pigeon stretch. We're alternating right to left side. We just passed the halfway point, and you can hear Christian breathe. Cue into your breath. Where does it feel good to inhale? Where does it feel good to exhale? Again, that knee comes up to the wrist, that back leg kicks back. Excellent work. Three, two, one. That's one round down. We have two more rounds. We're back to the top. Sumo squats going in three, two, one. Again, we're moving through these sumo squats, taking our hands out in front, and then pulling the elbows back for a proud chest. You could also try to maybe take your hands overhead just for a little extra challenge. But again, key thing here, Focusing on the lower body through the sumo squat. Okay, we don't want the knees to cave in. We want to pull them out so they're in line with our toes. It's almost as if we're pushing our hips forward. So we get this work here on the front side of our hips. We may not go as low as a normal body weight squat, and that's okay. I want to challenge you to keep your shoulders over your hips. So it's almost as if you're leaning back. Awesome job. Keep it up. About 10 seconds. And then we're going down to the ground for our shin box switch in five, four, three, two, one. Good. Coming down to the ground. Set yourself up. Three, two, one. And again, hands are just behind us, helping us stay tall through this switch. And we're ensuring that our feet are pressing into the floor and our bottom stays on the ground. You can see at the end here, 
We like to grab our knees and just reinforce this tall posture. Maybe taking a breath in that position and then alternating back to the opposite side. Good work, you guys. About 10 more seconds here, then we'll go back to our down dog two pigeon stretch. Beautiful. Five, four, three, two, one. There it is. Now, press yourself back and up here. Three, two, one. From that down dog to a pigeon stretch. Again, we're just going to kind of sink the hip down here, kick the back leg back, and then press our hips back and up as we push our hands into the floor. And just pausing for one, two, maybe three seconds in each position, but not moving too fast, and then also not moving too slow. Awesome work. Keep it up. Coming up on our last 10 here, and then we'll go back to the top. We have one more round. Five, four, three, two, one. Stand on up, shake that off for a moment. Back into our sumo squats last time. Going in three, two, one. Here we go. Are you feeling like your hips are starting to open up oh, yeah. a little bit more? Big time, big time. Outside of my hips, starting to work, starting to feel my hips and my glutes, mm -hmm. starting to turn on. That's exactly what we want. Again, think about putting more energy into your body. Just getting more comfortable with these movements that maybe we don't do too often. Kind of working on our weaknesses. Five more seconds. Three, two, one. Good job, you guys. Down to the ground. Shin box switches. Go on here. Three, two, one. Let's move. And last time. Nice work. Nice work. If you're feeling really comfortable here, you could just on a couple reps try to take your hands out in front and see if you can keep your spine long. See if you can keep that proud chest. If you start to fold and round here, or your feet move out, then no worries, just come back to your hands behind you, okay? We're just gonna check in. Are you able to do it now with your hands out in front? Just take that mental note of where you're at today. Good, five, four, three, two, one. Down dog to pigeon last time. Three, two, one, let's move, let's breathe. Let's take care of our mind. Take care of our body today, really prioritizing recovery days, knowing that they help us be the best athlete, best human that we can be for as long as possible. Nice work. Ooh. Great job, everybody. Keep it on up, y'all. Doing great. Last movement, last round. Last 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Awesome Ooh. job. Good work. Awesome work, Natalie. All right, guys. Natalie's been portraying to this already. It's our recovery day. So on these days, we really like to mix up our movements, right? So making sure that we're getting into our tight areas, making sure that we're moving through that so we can become more strong, right? More resilient mm -hmm. in those ranges. But now what we're going to do is we're going to get into a workout, which is really our flow of the day. So if you've been keeping up with us, you'll know that day three and day six are usually our flow days. So as you become more accustomed to these, once you pick up the full routine, then really try to find those tight areas. Maybe pause in those areas. Maybe take an inhale. Maybe take an exhale. For us, we're always using our breath through dynamic movement. So we inhale, we exhale as we move. But on these ones, once you again find tight spots, pause there, breathe in that tight position because hopefully over time, those positions will not be as tight anymore, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, we got 12 minutes of straight movement, just like we do with any other flow. I give you the first, I give you the second, I give you the third, and then I give you the fourth movement, and next thing you know, we've pieced together a long flow. Sound good, y'all? Natalie's gonna move first, I'm gonna coach through. Once she finishes the full flow, then I'll jump in with you guys. We're going to go onto the ground. We have our kneeling spinal wave first, okay? So Nat's arms are locked out, hips are back to our heels. Now you're going to drive your hands, drive your knees into the ground, and let's go into a full spinal wave. So she's going to slowly pull her spine 
up towards the ceiling, rounding out the spine towards the ceiling, actually allows the hips to fall down, shoulder blades are proud, neck is extra long as you squeeze your glutes. And then from there, tuck your chin, and then round your spine the same way that you rounded it going forward, is the same way you'll round going back. And now we'll just go one more rep. This is gonna be our first movement of the flow, guys. Anytime you get lost, this is exactly where you can come back to every single time. Awesome job, Natalie. Now the second movement is our half mountain climber. So Nat's gonna bring one leg, right leg, let's say, outside of her right hand. Boom. Now from here, just like a cat cow movement, Nat is gonna round and then pull her spine up long, trying to pull her hips up towards the ceiling. As you're there, you're gonna take a big inhale as you push your elbow into your knee, and then as you exhale, round out your spine and push yourself all the way back into a child's pose. And then same deal on your next leg, left leg outside your left hand. Again, from around it, you're gonna pull into an extended spine. You're gonna push your elbow, front elbow, into your front knee as you inhale, and then exhale, round out your spine, press on back, and then let's keep going through the flow. Y'all remember movement number one? Our kneeling spinal weight. So we always come back to that. This is always number one, okay? Then from there, movement number two, half mountain climber, pelvis up, chest up, find your front elbow into your front knee as you inhale, exhale, round out your spine. And that has said this before. We usually breathe with our chest. When you push your elbow into your knee and you take your inhale, try to fill up through the side of your body, down here near your belly, okay? Again, inhale, exhale, beautiful. Now, Nat's gonna keep going through the flow. When she gets done with her next half mountain climber, I'm gonna show you guys the third piece to this flow, okay? It's gonna be called our front hip twist. So Natalie pulls her pelvis up, chest is up, she inhales. Now she's gonna hold here for her exhale, ah, right? Now, after your exhale, you're gonna allow your front knee to rotate. So you're gonna rotate onto your pinky toe, your big toe will come off the ground, the inside of your ankle will come off the ground as his knee tries to widen. Again, you're gonna pull your hips up towards the ceiling, big inhale, exhale, before you bring your foot flat, and then you can switch up sides from a child's pose. Again, movement number two, half mountain climber, pelvis up, chest up, find your elbow into your knee, big inhale, exhale. And then from there, rotate on top of that front foot. So now you're just on your pinky toe. Again, pelvis and hip up towards the ceiling as you push your pinky toe down. Inhale, exhale. Awesome work, everybody. We'll go foot flat and then press on back. And guys, that's our flow so far. Kneeling spinal wave is number one. Half mountain climber on each side is number two. The third portion is after you go pelvis up, chest up, after you press the elbow into your knee, then you're gonna open up with your front foot. Inhale, exhale with your open foot, and then you'll do the same deal next side. Again, half mountain climber, pelvis up, chest up, elbow into your knee, inhale, exhale. On the exhale, you'll rotate over your pinky toe. Remember, push your pinky toe down, pull your hip bone up as you inhale, exhale, and then now, as you press on back, we're gonna go all the way back into a child's pose. Before you go through your kneeling spinal wave, here's the last part. Bring your right leg up again. You're gonna go into a half mountain climber. Now here, again, pelvis up, chest up. And then what we're gonna do now, guys, is we're gonna take our knee and our hip bone and our spine back behind us into a hamstring bow stretch. So again, you can see Natalie's front foot right now is still flat. She's pulling her hip bones up towards the ceiling and back behind her. You feel that in the hamstring, Natalie? Mm -hmm. Beautiful. She inhale, exhaled, and then she's going to pull everything back forward, and then she's going to switch up sides, guys. Again, this is the last part of our flow. Pelvis, our foot comes up, pelvis up, chest up, and remember, your knee and your spine and your hip pull up and back. This front foot here never comes off the ground. Try to push your big toe into the ground to make sure your front foot stays flat. Once you inhale, exhale, 
Then she's going to go foot back. And guys, we are going to go through the whole flow. We got about eight more minutes left right here, guys. I'm going to jump in with you, okay, Natalie? Mm -hmm. First thing we got, guys, kneeling spinal leg. This is definitely one where, again, we're doing this on our tile floor. But I highly recommend if you have a yoga mat, if you have a blanket, a pillow or something, because our knee stays on the ground for pretty much all of this, mm -hmm. it's going to be more comfortable if you have that. So don't feel like, uh, just because we don't have a mat doesn't mean you can't grab one and use one. Exactly. That would be extremely helpful in this situation. Again, half mountain climber, once I push my elbow into my knee, I rotate onto my pinky toe. Once I do that on one side, I'm going to do the same deal on my next side. Again, pelvis up, chest up, elbow into my front knee. I take a nice inhale. Exhale, I'm going to slowly rotate onto that pinky toe. Again, pelvis up, pinky toe down as I inhale. Exhale. I'll come all the way on back. Now, before we go back into our kneeling spinal wave, let's come up on our opposite side again. Remember, pelvis up, chest up, press my front foot down as my hips and my chest pull back behind me. Once you feel that in your hamstring, pause there. Take a good inhale. Exhale, pull yourself all the way in front. And then let's push our hips back. Same deal next side. I'm just going to show you from the side now. I come up, pelvis up, chest up, slow. Look how small of a movement that is. Pelvis up. Toes down, big inhale. The key thing is our hips aren't coming all the way to our heel here. Not the point of the stretch. Like Christian talked about, keep this foot flat. Continue to lift your tailbone up towards the ceiling. Awesome work, guys. Again, guys, we got about six more minutes. A little bit less than six minutes left. Of course, again, if something feels tight, hang out there a little bit longer. During our warm-up, right, we did a lot of the pigeon stretch, right? We went into this one. If something like that feels comfortable, then you can always add it into your flow. That's the great thing about these. We want your mind to start to, uh, to expand, right? To start to explore with your movement. Push my elbow into my knee. Exhale, I rotate. Push my pinky toe down, inhale. someone who's maybe a little more flexible, yep. you know, you don't tend to feel tight too often. We want to encourage you to move slow and be strong in these ranges. So yep. make sure you're not just passively going through it, but you are pausing, trying to get strong there and breathe there. Okay. Right? Just want to kind of throw that yep. in there because we may not all be feeling tight. Yes, but the very foundation guys of strength, right? Again, the foundation of strength isn't about how much you can squat, it isn't about the, the uh, high amount of weight. So it isn't all about picking up heavy weights. Whether what it's about is trying to teach your body the skill of turning on all your muscles mm -hmm. and working together at the same time. So as you're going through this, that's why when we get to like this end position, we're saying pelvis up, press your knee down, press your foot down. That is why we cue so much mm -hmm. is because we are trying to establish a foundation of strength for your body, making sure that your body feels comfortable getting tight all throughout the body when we go through movements. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, these same movements, the same way that we cue, the same way we're teaching them, is the same way that we teach our MBA and other professional athletes. Mm -hmm. Again, they understand the importance of taking time for your body. They understand the importance of exposing your body to ranges of motion that might be tight and inflexible for you. And the earlier you can start this practice, the better. The uh -huh. earlier, the better. But it's also never too late for parents, coaches, your family members. This is great for all ages. I just wish I would have started when I was a lot younger, right? When I started playing sports, it would have helped me a ton. Hundred percent. I couldn't agree more with that. Here we go, guys. We got about three more minutes left, y'all. About three more minutes. We're almost done. 
Try to keep your mind in this workout, y'all. Do not let your mind wander about what you got coming up next, about maybe some worries that are going on through your life right now. Again, just stay in the moment. Make the most out of every moment here. So it's kind of like a moving meditation. Exactly. I like the way, I like that title. Mm hmm Here we go, guys. Less than two minutes left, y'all. Less than two minutes left. Awesome work, everybody. We're almost there, everyone. Again, stay in the practice. Keep breathing through your motion. Whenever something feels tight, pause there. Hang out there a little bit longer. Let your body really understand what we're trying to get out of this movement. Mm -hmm. One more little thing for some of you that might be helpful. If it is hard to stay on your palms, you can see on some of these we're kind of just going to our fingertips or you could go to your knuckles. Okay, so just a little something or if you have some blocks, you can even use some blocks if you're feeling extra tight. 100%. Nice job. Guys, last 60 seconds here. Again, kneeling spinal wave into that half mountain climber. After the half mountain climber, you're pressing your elbow into your knee. You're going to open up over that pinky edge of the front foot. Big inhale as you pull your hips up, pinky down. Once I get my breath in there, then I go all the way back out in front. Again, pelvis up, chest up, slowly pull back. Okay, my hamstring is talking to me now. Take a big inhale. Push down, exhale. Going forward. Guys, about 20 seconds left. Y'all, here we go. Great job, everybody. Mm -hmm. Take a second to breathe. Take a second to finish up if you're still going through your flow. I don't know about you guys. Not only is my body feeling very loose and relaxed, but I can feel within my mind, I was very uh, clustered before we started this practice, right? It's very easy to get busy and let our minds start to wander and start yes. thinking about a lot of what ifs. Mm -hmm. But I love how Natalie mentioned that as a movement meditation. It might be for some people, it might not be for some of y'all, but at least for myself and Natalie, this type of practice is a great practice to just allow our mind to calm down along with our physical body. Yeah. Thank you guys for joining us with that flow. Natalie's gonna go ahead and just take you through our last breathing practice, book of the month, and then we'll be done for the day. All right, y'all. Today's breathing practice, something similar to what we've done in the past, but just switching up a little bit. It's where we're inhaling through our nose, and then slowly exhaling while the inhales are kind of fast and powerful and the exhale is really slow and calm. So this time we'll go two inhales and then a slow exhale. It'll look like this. And we'll do that five times together. Okay. So if you would like to sit down, you can sit down. If you want to lay down, you can lay down, whatever works for you. You can stand with me. Let's go here. Number one and three, two, one and inhale, exhale. Again, inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. Awesome job. Just go ahead and reset your breath. Breathe as you normally would. Hopefully feeling a little more calm, a little more at peace, like Christian spoke to 
you know, body's feeling good, our mind is feeling clear. We want to leave these days feeling better than when we started, right? We don't want to leave being exhausted every day. Being as exhausted at the end of every workout does not necessarily make it a good workout. So again, these days are key and it's important that we teach our body that these days are good for us, right? We gotta kind of wrap our mind around that, that it's okay to slow down sometimes. And that can be difficult to do, but I know you guys are doing an excellent job. I know you guys are working hard, so we appreciate that. We just wanna leave you with this, the reminder about the book of the month. The book of the month is called Mind Gym. If you can't get your hands on a copy of it, um, you might be able to find it to where you can listen to it, but we'll be posting about it, we'll be talking about it, I'll be pulling some quotes from it as well just to share some key things that you know resonate with us. But it's all about training our mind and making our mind more resilient that plays into making our physical body and making our practice or our play more resilient and better as well. Thank you guys for joining us, we'll see you tomorrow.